Hi, I'm Frank Bullock with Industrial Training University. I'd like to talk with you today about NFPA 70E, Electrical Safety in the Workplace. More specifically, I'd like to point out three of the top ten electrical violations that OSHA has found in 2011 when they did surprise walkthroughs. Number one on the list was lockout tagout. That came in with about 3,600 violations. Electrical wiring methods came in second with about 3,600. And then electrical general requirements came in with about 3,000. So there's a total of about 10,000 violations that OSHA found. When OSHA comes in and they find these violations, if they're bad enough, you could receive fines. You could also have your doors locked by OSHA. This doesn't even take into consideration that with these violations out there, your employees could be injured or killed. Well, how can your company avoid the risks? How can your company reach compliance with NFPA 70E? OSHA 1910.132 says, the employer shall assess the workplace to determine if hazards are present or likely to be present, which necessitate the use of PPE. How do you know what PPE to wear? The best thing that you can do is to call ITU. Give us a call. We'll come out, analyze your electrical system. We'll take into consideration all the things that uh, comprise your circuits to your equipment. And then <clears throat> we'll be able to tell you exactly what PPE you need to wear when you're standing in front of energized, exposed components. After we do all the footwork and take the information and put it into our software, We'll come up with a label, such as the one you see behind me. What does this label mean? Whenever your worker goes out to do uh, voltage reading and troubleshooting, they're exposing themselves to energized components. They will need to cover themselves and be protected. This label tells them exactly what they need to wear for each place. It's not a, a one-size-fits-all label. Here you notice under flash protection, flash hazard category. This one happens to be a four. Mem and arc rating in calories per centimeter squared. This one says 37.9. That's like taking 37.9 candles and putting it in a square centimeter for one second on your hand, that amount of energy. <clears throat> Here you see exactly what you're going to need to wear when you expose that energized conductor to do voltage reading troubleshooting or if you're going to work on that piece of equipment. And it tells you each thing that you need to wear. On this side of the label, you'll note that it talks about shock protection. In this instance, it says 480 volt shock hazard when the cover is open or removed. Again, we're talking about energized exposed components. It gives us our flash protection boundary, and these are in inches. It gives us the limited, restricted, and prohibited boundaries. <clears throat> it also tells us the maximum fault current, and then it will tell you if you need to use voltage rated gloves or voltage rated tools. At the bottom you'll note that your equipment ID, if you have a unique uh, equipment ID system, we can use that and we can put that here. Over here on this side 
you'll note the date and of course our logo and website over there. The date is important to you because in the 2012 standard uh, NFPA 70E has pointed out that you need to update your arc flash analysis every five years. You also need the exact wording in the standard is not to exceed three years on your retraining of the NFPA 70E electrical safety in the workplace. These things that we've just spoken of will keep you in compliance with the standard.